This is a question from AQA A-Level Chemistry. It is a paper three question from Required Practicals and this is based on RPA7. I'm gonna recommend that you pause on each section of the question, have a go at it for yourself first and then review your answers once you're done. So let's begin by looking at question parts A and B. Here's part C. Part D. Part E. And finally, part F. So now let's go through and take a look at the answers. Question here about preparation of hexantuol. It is not mixable with water. It's immiscible. Its boiling point is 140. And we've got a method here setting out how we are going to prepare hex one in using this method. Taking hexene, boiling tube, in an ice bath, adding conch phosphoric acid. After five minutes, adding 10 cm cubed of distilled water. Transfer that to a separating funnel, shake the mixture, allow it to settle. Discard the lower aqueous level. Add a fresh 10 cm cubed sample of distilled water, repeating steps D and E. Transfer any remaining liquid to a beaker, add 2 grams of anhydrous magnesium sulfate and allow to stand for 5 minutes, filter under reduced pressure and distill the filtrate and collect the distillate that boils in the range 130 to 160. Now there's a lot of information there and it's about picking out the relevant information that's going to help you to answer these questions. In part A, we've got it's important to wear eye protection and a lab coat when completing this experiment. Suggest with a reason one other appropriate safety precaution for this experiment. Now obviously, if you've read the question properly, you're not going to fall into the first pitfall and talk about wearing goggles. You must read these questions carefully. So the precaution might well be, if you're wearing eye protection, you're wearing a lab coat, maybe you will also wear gloves. And the reason for that, if you go through, think about the best reason to protect yourself or the most likely thing you're going to have to protect yourself from, and that is the concentrated phosphoric acid. What's wrong with it? It's corrosive. On to part B, give a reason for adding the distilled water in steps C and F. Well, what we're doing is removing any soluble impurities. So that's one option. We're also removing the excess acid. We're diluting it down. Uh, it was concentrated. That means it's not going to catalyze the reaction any further. Let's move on to part C. Give a reason for adding anhydrous magnesium sulfate in step H. Well, Hopefully, you're remembering that magnesium sulfate here is used as a drying agent. What do we mean by a drying agent? We are removing that water that we have added. On to part D, and we're completing a diagram. Now, diagrams do not have to be perfect, but they have to fit certain criteria. You have got to remember the Buckner funnel, the Buckner flask for filtering under reduced pressure. You'll notice I've started by drawing this tube in here. That is going to be what goes to the Buckner funnel. The reason I've drawn that first is I'm then able to build my bung around it because this has got to be a cross-sectional diagram. If I drew my bung the whole way across blocking that tube, it would no longer be valid. I'm gonna put some liquid down at the bottom, but I'm gonna draw my Buckner funnel and I could add a little bit of filter paper in there as well. And that gives me my diagram. Didn't need to be labeled in this case, or it did. So let's put those in. We've got Buckner funnel, filter paper, and I'll label the bung just because it's there. Okay, let's move on to part E. Identify the most likely organic impurity other than hexwanine in the distillate collected in step J. Suggest one reason why it would be difficult to remove. So <clears throat> we have got um, hexan 2 that we're starting with and we are preparing hex 1 -ene. The impurity is likely to be hexan 1 -ol. And the reason it would be difficult to remove it is that we have got a similar boiling point.
And that means we can't separate it using fractional distillation. OK, finally, on to part F, we've got a calculation here. Calculate the mass in grams of hexan 2 all formed from 11 cm cubed of hex 1 ene if the yield is 31%. Give your answer to one decimal place and we're given the density of hex 1 ene. Well, let's first of all work out the mass of hex 1 ene. I'm going to highlight the numbers so you can see where they're coming from. We have got here 11 cm cubed as a volume and a density of 0.678 grams per centimeter cubed. Multiply those and we get the mass of 7.46 grams. My moles of hex one in, well, I've got my mass 7.46, which I'm going to bring down, and I'm calculating its MR um, as 84. I've put the 84.0 in because it's good practice to do that to one decimal place. That takes me to 0 0.0888 moles. In terms of moles of product, that's also going to be 0 0.0888 because there's a one to one ratio. Um, we're going to multiply that, though, by 31 over 100. And that's because the yield is only 31%. That then takes us to 0 0.028. Moles of product is therefore, mass of product, sorry, is 0 0.028 moles multiplied by the MR of the alcohol. And that takes us to a mass of 2.8 grams once we have it to one decimal place. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.